with SHOT Show just finished in Las Vegas. We walked away talking about all the products planned through 2019, but something else was stirring at the other side of the pond. Over here in the UK, a new brand was born and they announced their initial lineup. And I've got not just one of their rifles to review, but two of them. Let's take a look. What's going on? It's Graham from Airsoft Nation. Welcome to another video. If it is your first time here and you want the latest news, reviews and all other types of airsoft related content, start now by hitting the subscribe button below and smash the bell so you don't miss anything. This will be the first gun review on this channel, at least in video format. So let me know what you think in the comment section below if I've missed anything that you'd like to know more about in future. But until then, let's talk about Aetherian Airsoft. And if the name itself didn't give you enough of a clue, it is indeed a UK brand inspired by the legendary King Arthur. Announced in late 2018 with some teaser photos, their first rifles are now available in selected stores, and I'm able to give one of these away. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Now as the screenshot shows, we have five variations of rifles available. We have the Recon, the Knight, the Glatison, the Mark 18, and the Veteran. And before you say, oh no, not another M4, it's just quite simply a safe choice when entering the airsoft industry. And these models realistically cover a wide range of player's base, you know, whether you want the long or the shorter rifle, or whatever your play style, there's going to be something there for you. That said though, having had chats with them for the last few weeks, there are definitely more models planned in the very near future. Now, while externally there are very clear differences, under the receiver they're mostly identical, which is why they were keen to send me two of them to get an opinion of the liner, have a closer look at them, and of course take them out for a shoot or two to get my first impressions. Of the five rifles, I have the Mark 18 here and the Recon. So let's first off start with the Mark 18 externals and then we'll talk about the internals after. The Mark 18 Mod 1 is a very popular rifle, mainly because of the special operations usage and then Hollywood pretty much made it one of those go-to rifles. One of the key points of the Mark 18 is the fact that it's got the shorter barrel at the end which makes it perfect for CQB or raw shooting. And in airsoft, where barrel distance doesn't make barrel length, sorry, doesn't make that much of a difference, it's perfect for the players no matter where you're going. The Excalibur AG series are pretty much across the board all full metal construction with just the odd parts of furniture and of course the the numerous styles here will always have slightly different furniture which may not be metal. It's ultimately to complement and individualise whatever variation you've got. The M16, for example, has got a full plastic stock, as you'd expect. Starting from the rear here, we have the rubber butt plate moving onto a crane stock which has six positions. Now getting the butt plate off is really easy. You simply undo the two clips there at the very bottom and pull it straight off. Now there is absolutely plenty of storage available inside the crane stock and it's perfect for your 9.6 NIMS or your 7.4 LiPo batteries which are the recommended batteries. You can get your nunchucks in there or crane style batteries in there with no issue and just to let you know the connection on there is Mini Tamiya. Moving down from the stock we have the buffer assembly tube and onto a metal ambidextrous dual loop sling plate which means it's perfect for your lefties and your righties. Moving from there, there on we have the M4 standard receiver with the auto, semi and safe options or functionality. Across there and below is to the trigger which is just a standard M4 trigger. Mechanical which we'll come back to shortly and a working bolt release catch before you get to the very front of the receiver there which has the excellent Excalibur trademarks. On the other side of the rifle, and I'll just flip this over here, is simply the mag release. This gun doesn't feature ambidextrous fire selectors. So, you know, for your lefties, you are gonna have to use the 
essentially other side. Um, I'm a lefty, no issue at all, but it's worth knowing. Up the top we do have the metal charging handle which works and locks the plate back so once again I'll just pull that. It locks there and it basically reveals the hop up chamber which is full metal and again as I say you can hit the bolt release catch to release and then fold the dust cover up. On top of the rails we have for the Marco team the Knight Armament style folding adjustable iron sights. So this is what you'd expect to see on the rifle anyway. However, that said, most of you are going to be using a lock tick of some sort, whether it's your Eotex or your red dots. Um, so pretty much most of these are gonna be for your backup iron sights. Moving down to the pistol grip, and it is your standard A2 grip. Narrow and great for pretty much most hand sizes. Moving up to the row, the marketing signature quad row, so that's Four rails there of Picatinny 20mm attachments for anything you would like to put on there. It's worth saying this is again metal in a bronze colour. There is a perfect finish between the receiver and the rail. No gaps, no wobble or anything like that. And I'm really, really pleased with the way this is. Finally, we do have the flash hider there, which is removable if you fancy putting a suppressor or tracer unit. Undo the Allen key and it goes to a 14mm counterclockwise attachment. I say the marketing isn't up your street, but maybe you want the recon. Well, it's pretty much identical all the way up there until you get to the front rail where it is slightly shorter with the delta ring. And then at the end you have this integrated suppressor. While the Mark 18 is longer than the recon, actually the barrel length is longer than the recon because the inner barrel goes all the way up to the end of the suppressor, whereas the Mark 18 finishes in the middle of the outer barrel. It's those little things you know, but ultimately there isn't going to be much, if any, difference in performance. Talking performance, let's have a little look at the internals. As I say, it's exactly the same across the entire Excalibur series, so ultimately you're picking the outside exterior for what you'd like to use and you can have confidence for the internals. When I received these models, they all arrived with a UK test sheet, as shown here, and what happens is they show the FPS of the tests, along with some safety guidelines and instructions of use. So all of these rifles are actually tested in the factory before they leave the country, and then once they arrive into the UK, they're tested again by a Ferrin Airsoft, who do this safety um, checklist and confirm the FPS before of course send them to retailers who most would probably run it through the chronograph again before selling it to you. That's to say every rifle that comes from a fair and airsoft will be sight legal and between 340 and 350 FPS on a 0.2 gram which I know can be an issue for some of the other well-known brands but if for some reason you did want to change the spring all of these models also come with a quick change system. So to change the spring, it's really simple. You unscrew the buffer tube nut. And again, this is loose, so I can do it by hand, but you'd probably need to use a ring to get that off. And then twist the barrel 45 degrees, and then pull it off. You'll see there's your uh, battery cable. Now at the end here is a nut, which you can tighten up, but essentially when you unscrew this, the spring will come out. Just be very careful, it doesn't fly across the room. Opening the upper receiver is a simple case of removing the two screws here, or what would be the pins with the Allen screws, and then taking the pins out. This will slide the upper receiver off to reveal a full metal gearbox with 8mm bearings, a 15 tooth steel piston, or 15 steel tooth piston even, an enhanced tappet plate, and as I said before, the hop-up chamber is also made of metal. Going down to the barrel, it is a 6.03, and obviously the length varies depending on what rifle you've gone for. Motor is a standard motor, and as I said before, you are being recommended a 9.6 NIM or a 7.4 LiPo. Essentially, this is a mid-level rifle that is ready to go out of the box you just don't need to touch it. Go out, take it, and walk around with a smile on your face. Using it on the range with both of them, I was easily hitting 150 foot out of the box, which was basically the maximum I had on the, my range at the time. And to be fair, that is typically 
the most most people are going to have as an average engagement distance on sites. Now I know what everyone will be asking: Who makes these rifles? You know, a Ferrin Airsoft is just the brand. Well, I can tell you from the gearbox casing and the body. It's East and Crane. However, according to Aferian Airsoft, there are a few other manufacturers involved with the process, which kind of makes sense, since there are a few subtle differences from the stock model. And this is kind of a very common practice. It's the same situation that the Specknut Arms brand, who also use East and Crane, but then add their own changes. But what are the downsides? because no rifle is absolutely perfect. Well, truth be told, all these rifles are 250 pounds, and for that money, you're getting a whole lot of gun. I've been really happy with the performance when we ran it out, and we took about 5,000 BBs in there just over a couple of weekends. Now, it's closest, at least on the marketing front, is the Delta Enforcer by New Pro. And comparing this up against uh, Enforcer, which we had on the same day, it had just slightly more range, but the same rate of fire and the same build quality pretty much is identical on most parts. There are a few things though that I would like to see with this. Firstly, as has been here the whole time, this is a 300 round high cap magazine which comes with it and I'll be honest, it fed fine, it has no issues, it works fine but it just doesn't feel nice. It's one of those ones which I wouldn't say is going to last you years and years of use now I'm not a high cap user, so that could be half of my hatred towards them, but um, I would say the magazine itself will probably be one of the letdown parts. Like I say, the magazine fed fine, no issue at all, it's just there's a lot of noise and a little bit of wobble that I would probably say you're going to have some other mags anyway. The other thing, and again this isn't a problem, but the trigger is mechanical, which means there's no MOSFET on there, so you're going to pull the trigger all the way to get it to work. Versus, and again, the Delta Enforcer, which does have a micro switch. Consequently, it's kind of known to have a better trigger response. Now, truth be told, it's not necessarily a bad thing and can really be down preference. Because I personally run a Tipman Commando, which is here. This is also a mechanical trigger, and it's great. It is down to preference, but if you do want that trigger response, and you're used to having a micro switch in there, you may want to add a MOSFET which offers the, the better trigger response later down the line. And with this rifle, you can add that MOSFET, and if anything, you can add the intelligent and the smart MOSFETs with the delays or the burst modes, anything you want. Whereas if you did have the Enforcer, for example, by Newbrook, you're kind of stuck with what you've got because you can't change that, not without a lot of work. In addition to that, really, the rifle itself is good. You could definitely look at maybe changing the motor in the future and the barrel in the future, but in terms of the gearbox and the externals, I wouldn't be touching it at all. Slap a scope on there or an optic on there and you are good to go. So, the question is now then, who is this rifle for, or all the rifles for? Well, I'd say, if you've got your first rifle, like the G&G Combat Machines, the Falcon ASL or the TRG series, the Lancer Tacticals, or even, as shown earlier, the Tipman Commando, they're your polymer rifles, and you know they're great budget first entry rifles. But they do have a limited life, and of course they are plastic and polymer. This would be your next step up. Something that is full metal, made of better externals, and internally with a longer lifespan. But maybe you're a first time buyer, knowing you play regularly, you want something ready to go out of the box, designed with durability in mind, or you just want the real or weight, you know, something that doesn't feel like a toy gun, then something like this would be perfect for you. On top of that, maybe you're like me, just a sucker for one of the variations, the M16 is my one, where the Excalibur series will offer that to you. So you could buy the M16, or maybe you want the, the smaller rifles there, or maybe you just want that tasty, glattison, evil-looking row. I think it's great to see another UK brand at the table. One that's focusing on providing a good service, the quality control, and bringing the rifles which are UK safe and have a little bit more consistency than what we've kind of seen in the past, especially now with the UK dual limits enforced. I think they've launched with a safe, 
but fantastic lineup with five rifles of varying length fitting any style of player and I really can't wait to see what the future holds for other models. But let me know what you think. Tell me what one of the five are your favourite model and I'll put the photo up now. Is it the old school veteran, the M16 as I said earlier? Or perhaps that Glatterson with that row. It's definitely got that evil end on for sure. And don't forget, we are going to give away one of these rifles, which I'll come to in a moment. If you want more information about the Afarian Airsoft Excalibur series, why not click the review in the description below to read the full details, including like the weights and some of the more nitty gritty details. Also on that link will be a list of all the retailers who have it in stock right now. And that doesn't matter if you're watching six months down the line, that list is always up to date right at this very moment. Don't forget you can subscribe to Airsoft Nation for more reviews, interviews and all that Airsoft jazz. And more importantly, giveaways. Because the more of you that support this, the more I can get to do giveaways, which is where we're going to come to this. If you want to be in a chance to win one of the Arferian Airsoft Excalibur series, your choice, depending on stock levels, of course, and as most importantly, as long as you do have a valid form of defence, all you need to do is click on the link in the description. That will take you to the review. At the bottom of the review is the competition entry form, and we're actually keeping this open all the way up until March 2019, and it's open the closing on the what's it, 9th or 10th of March you'll see in the entry point anyway 9th or 10th of March when we are at IWA we will be doing a live draw of the winner and we'll contact them very soon and they can pick any of the five rifles they like a big thank you to Aferian Airsoft for allowing me to do a giveaway and I hope you've enjoyed the review don't forget leave your comments below and I'll see you on the next one you're still hanging around. Why not subscribe to the show by clicking the button up here? And there are some other videos that we've put out, especially the grenade reviews, but all of our other videos are over here. So if you're here and you, you want to jump in that rabbit hole of YouTube, just one more video, definitely give it a try. Don't forget though, that description box below, enter the competition while you can, read the review or just buy one today. Click the link below. See ya.